The topic for discussion is headache and facial pain. Actually, uh, International Association for the Study of Pain has uh, defined pain as a sensory, emotional, unpleasant sensory emotional experience which is usually associated with an actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. When it comes to headache, headache is one of the most uh, common conditions experienced by most of us. Uh, over almost every person once in their lifetime might have experienced this headache. When such common condition, there are usually two types of it. One is primary and secondary. Uh, primary headaches are usually, uh, these are headache syndromes which are uh, caused by the uh, initial pathology itself. And then secondary causes are something that some other causes like intracranial bleeding or any medication overuse etc will induce these headaches. Now coming to the headaches, the chronic headaches are usually not very alarming. A, a normal uh, uh, paracetamol or an NSA can actually relieve these headaches. But in some cases there are certain alarming conditions where there will be a sudden onset headache or abrupt headache that happens. This needs actually an immediate care. This might be a condition or a probable sub arachnoid hemorrhage hence there is a sudden onset headache which actually needs a immediate uh, uh, treatment or management for this kind of headaches. Now coming to primary headache syndromes like there are various conditions which are considered to be primary headache syndromes and these primary headache syndromes include migraine which will have with or without aura or trigeminal autonomic cephalgias that is nothing but TACs and then we have tension type of headaches, thunderclap headaches. We have uh, headaches because of exertion or cuff or primary stabbing. And a new, new daily persistent headache syndrome is one of a condition which also is included under primary headache syndromes. Then coming to secondary causes of headaches. The secondary causes of headaches include intracerebral bleeding. Intracerebral bleeding uh, may be that is occurring in subdural region or subarachnoid or intracerebral hemorrhage can lead to this in, uh, uh, headaches. And then medication overuse headache, certain medications when they have been overused such as pentoxifilin, pentoxifilin has a side effect of headache, such drugs, uh, any drug overuse or drug abuse uh, or these type of uh, uh, medications can cause medication overuse headaches. Next is raised intracranial pressure, one of the most common causes of a uh, sudden or acute headache which needs a immediate care is raised intracranial pressure which includes idiopathic intracranial hypertension or a brain tumor and then inflammatory diseases such as vasculitis, arthra uh, arthritis or that is temporal arthritis etc. These conditions also can lead to headaches. And various infections such as brain abscess, meningitis, encephalitis, these conditions also has headache as one of their clinical features. And one other important feature is referred pain. Referred pain is pain that has been radiating or referred from a distant region or adjacent region uh, where the actual pathology is. But this pain due to the, uh, this pain is being transferred or, or referred to the other uh, structures of the face. Such as uh, ear, ear pain can manifest headache. TMJ pain can also manifest as, uh, as one of the manifestations is headache. Uh, and then any neck or orbit uh, pathologies can also uh, be can also have referred pain to the temple region leading to headache. Some of the red flag or alarming symptoms in headache include any sudden onset that is occurring within minutes. Very severe or acute onset headaches is one of the red flag symptom or alarming symptom and usually seen in case of cerebral venous sinus uh, thrombosis or subarachnoid hemorrhage, pituitary apoplexy or in meningitis cases you can see this uh, sudden onset uh, type of headache. Then we have focal neurologic symptoms. If this headache is associated with some focal neurologic symptoms uh, like vascular infection, neoplastic or any intracranial mass lesion, doing that those conditions are also very alarming conditions. Then we have new onset in patients. If patient is aged above 60 years and patient is having uh, a newer onset kind of uh, headache that is this is a, for the first few times this, type, this kind of headache is been happening then you also have to suspect temporal arthritis and this needs a temporal artery biopsy for the confirmation in this old age uh, people. Then next is any raised intracranial pressure which worsens on waking up or lying down is associated with vomiting this might uh, you might have to suspect an intracranial mass lesion which is also an alarming sign. 
Then we have uh, meningoencephalitis and other neoplasms which will have constitutional symptoms associated with weight loss, general malaise, pyrexia, rash and meningitis and these conditions will be uh, usually associated with meningoencephalitis and certain neoplasms. Now coming to migraine. Migraine is a condition, is a kind of headache, usually uh, manifest with the periods of exacerbations and remissions. That is, this is not a long-standing or, uh, or a you know, continuous type of headache, but it has a periods of exacerbation and periods of remissions or decrease. And uh, migraine is usually have certain accompanying symptoms such as visual symptoms with or without aura. And they have, uh, patients usually have certain uh, uh, clinical features such as photophobia that is they uh, try to restrict light or they try to uh, prevent light or avoid light and then sonophobia they have fear for certain abnormal sounds or quirky kind of sounds and then osmophobia they also have a, a dislike to certain smells which will also trigger migraine and nausea and vomiting are associated with this migraine attack. Usually these patients with migraine, they tend to rest after this migraine attack and they prefer to sleep in a dark room that is in a closed room so that the, uh, they, feel, uh, uh, they feel consoled in this kind of migraineous attack. Normally it is usually associated with fever. In cases like fever and weight loss, you have to suspect meningitis and malignancy. And in case of uh, patients, usually in case of cluster headache, they are restless and agitated. Whereas in migraine, these uh, migraine patients, usually they, they wanted to be rested. They, they want to rest the, and also they wanted to sleep in case of in a closed rooms or in a dark rooms. But in case of cluster headache, patients are usually agitated and they are restless. And duration of headache also gives us a clue for diagnosis. This will help us to, uh, in coming to a proper diagnosis also. If Headache has been persistent for longer period of time such as for several months and years. It is usually not sinister. Sinister is nothing but harmful. It is not so evilish and it is not so harmful if the headache has been uh, consistently present for a longer period of time. However, if it is an acute or is it, it is in a sudden attack, then it, you have to think of some sinister causes underlying this headaches. Usually in patients with greater than 60 years of age group as we already saw, which is usually localized to one or both the temples and there are no temporal pulses felt. However, the temporal artery is usually enlarged and tender. Then you can think of temporal arteritis in these patients. Now, coming to facial pain. Apart from headaches, there are certain uh, uh, conditions which will lead to facial pain. Usually, most of the cases of uh, facial pain has a dental cause and there are certain uh, Conditions where, such as non-dental causes which includes temporomandibular joint problems such as TMDs, sinusitis as we saw headaches, neurologic pain, idiopathic facial pain and cancer pain. Coming to this temporal joint disorders, usually uh, uh, commonly called as TMDs, these temporomandibular uh, joint disorders usually refer the pain onto the facial structures. These TMDs are of two types, one is articular and extra-articular. And articular uh, disorders which include usually disc displacement with or without reduction and this displacement can be either anterior disc displacement or posterior disc displacement. The common symptoms that are associated with this disc displacement include pain that is tenderness in the preauricular region. Usually in the preauricular region patient will have pain either on opening or closing the mouth. Uh, they might have deviation of the mouth or the mandible to one side or S-shaped deviation can also be seen or there can be conditions without any deviation of the mandible. Usually patients, most of the cases they will have a clicking sound and there are some cases which will not have any click. However, these uh, conditions of articular uh, uh, temporomandibular joint disorders can have this pain uh, in the preauricular region. Coming to extra articular pain which includes myofascial pain, capsulitis, retrodiscitis, these conditions also will uh, have a facial pain. Coming to myofascial pain, normally we have muscles of mastication, four muscles of mastication, maybe because of overuse or because of uh, uh, occlusal discrepancy, because of any high points in occlusion or any uh, myo, uh, uh, overuse, uh, uh, overuse, then these muscles of mastication can become tender leading to myofascial pain. The muscles of mastication, mastication includes the masseter muscle, your temporalis and then your medial and lateral pterygoid. So in the temporalis, usually the pain is referred at the temporal region, masseter, medial and lateral pterygoid over the TMJ preauricular region and at the uh, uh, cheek region, you can see this facial pain. 
And coming to capsulitis, usually it is a, any inflammation of the TMJ capsule. It is nothing but capsulitis. Even this can lead to facial pain. Now coming to sinusitis. Sinusitis, as the name itself uh, indicates, it is inflammation of the sinuses. Usually in the facial region, that is in the face, we have four sinuses. Namely, frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, ethmoidal and sphenoidal sinus. Acute sinusitis is usually associated with any infections or congestion which will lead to localized pain over the affected sinus. Most common sinus that is usually affected is maxillary sinus followed by your uh, frontal sinuses. And this maxillary sinus uh, is one condition which is usually have, uh, uh, refer, refer the pain to the facial regions. However, this might not be a sole cause for the persistent facial pain. This sinusitis can be uh, treated by because if there is any bacterial infections, antibiotic uh, therapy can help can be helpful in treating this sinusitis. Or uh, in case of uh, any congestion, then anti-congestants or steam vaporization can help can be helpful in uh, removing this uh, congestion that is being there. Usually, in case of sinusitis, uh, diagnosis can be by proper history of the patient, and most of the times, patient uh, gives a, a a common history that. After lying down or after bending and raising the head, patients usually feel heaviness of the face. There will be pain along the lower orbit region and especially along the maxillary sinus region in case of maxillary sinusitis. Uh, and periorbital pain can also be seen in case of severe sinusitis conditions. Post-nasal drip can also be seen in most of these cases. And patients usually feel heaviness or puffedness of the face. Then coming to headaches which are another common cause of facial pain as we have seen in the previous uh, uh, slides like we have migraine which may pre be present with uh, facial pain and also tension type of headache which will usually have a periorbital pain. Now coming to various neurologic causes that can also manifest facial pain they include trigeminal neuralgia, herpes zoster and post herpetic neuralgia. These are some of the commonest causes that have been uh, seen associated with facial pain. Now coming to trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, trigeminal neuralgia is a condition usually characterized by sudden uh, in onset sharp lancinating or stabbing type of pain usually uh, seen in the three branches of trigeminal nerve namely ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular branch. Usually it has an electric shock type of pain uh, with a shorter duration uh, and it is most commonly seen in second and third division with mandibular division more predominantly affected. This uh, trigeminal neuralgia has a peculiar trigger zones. If it is in the upper and uh, uh, in the second and third branches involved, usually these trigger zones are usually present at the upper lip region or alley of the nose. Uh, and whenever patient touches these trigger zones or accidentally touches while brushing or while splashing water onto the face, then these trigger zones are activated leading to trigeminal neuralgia. Usually one half of the uh, face, that is these trigeminal branches applying to that particular half of the face are affected in case of this trigeminal neuralgia. Now coming to shingles caused by varicella zoster. It's a viral infection usually affecting the ophthalmic branch of trigeminal nerve. Here pain precedes the rashes and uh, other branches of trigeminal nerve are also infected. And this shingles usually forms a dermatomal pattern or zosteriform pattern. Coming to post herpetic neuralgia. Post herpetic neuralgia is a condition which is actually a sequelae of herpes zoster infection. Usually if the pain that is being associated with zoster infection persists even after one month duration of healing of the zoster wounds that is the ulcers and vesicles. After uh, healing of these uh, 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 the vesicles that is which break to form ulcers and then they heal after healing uh, after a period of one month if the pain still persists it is called as post herpetic neuralgia. It is usually characterized by continuous burning type of pain at the affected region. Patients usually exhibit a, a feature called allodynia that is even with the slightest touch patient will feel severe pain. There will be destructive lesions on this trigeminal nerve. This can further lead to numbness rather than pain. When there is uh, any severing of the uh, nerve ending then this can cause numbness rather than pain in these conditions. Next the condition is a persistent idiopathic facial pain. Apart from all other conditions, if there is a facial pain where there is no particular underlying cause, usually seen in middle-aged women, and there is a persistent pain with no obvious abnormal symptoms or signs, then it is called as persistent idiopathic facial pain. Usually in this condition, all the investigations will be normal, but still patient com uh, complains of painful episodes on the, or the facial pain. 
and this condition is usually called as idiopathic uh, persistent idiopathic facial pain so this uh, lecture deals with various headaches and different types of facial pains uh, and their uh, associated symptoms and that can be uh, that can be helpful for diagnosing various facial pains and headaches thank you